I was born in Tell City, Indiana. Farmed in the river bottoms all my life with my dad. Tractor pulled all my life. My dad did a little pulling in the real, real early 70s. I'm a 72 model. I'm, I'm, I'm 50 years old and he, he pulled in the real early 70s in some NA classes. He had different grinds made from like crane cams. Yep. You know, I, I still laugh. I can open the toolbox and find all those offset keys to degree the cam in just right. And they didn't hold very good. <laughs> you know, you break a camshaft, you got bent valves. <laughs> yep. We'd ride in a 4300 Transtar International day cab with a old Fruhoff low boy. Me, him, and mom rode many of places. I had a board, a two by four and two by six that I slept on in it. <laughs> we traveled around Indiana. Then we got to go into Kentucky. Then he got to chasing Hoosier State points. In the late 70s, he started, you know, he had a 6030 he okay. bought new. And there's parts of it still on River Rat today. Okay. Not many. <laughs> I think it's the dash cowling and that's it. That's <laughs> we went a lot of places. I remember our, we had a K100 Kenworth that dad bought new. Dad smoked cigars. Man, he, mom and I's eyes would be watering. <laughs> oh, it, at probably age, around age 55, he quit and never smoked again. I think he was so tight that he got sick of buying them. <laughs> that, that, that's what, what he taught me more than anything, if you want it, you gotta work for it. In the Ohio River bottoms, driftwood can be pretty hard on you. I've cleaned up my fair share of driftwood in my life. He also taught me that drainage is very important. <laughs> Dad liked to cut a lot of surface drainage ditches. He liked them deep. Okay. <laughs> We try not to cut them as deep as he used to. We'd tear up more stuff on deep ditches than we did anything. Right now, we farm about 5,500 acres. Probably two thirds of that is river bottom ground. Dad, Dad pretty much started with nothing. In 1963, I think he got his mom and dad to sign a note so he could go buy a tractor and then he never relied on them again and he rented some river bottom ground right there close to Grandview. It was full of Johnson grass. It is some pretty fast growing grass. Okay. Anyway, he went down there with a 40-20 and a four bottom plow and went to work and bottom plowed all that ground and raised one heck of a crop the next year. And my grandmother threw a fit whenever he rented that and told him that he was gonna go broke farming in the river bottoms. <laughs> well, he didn't listen. Dad was the type of guy, he did things his way. We always kind of laughed. He, he always told me the easiest way isn't the best. Being young, I was always trying to do things the easy way. He was an excellent teacher. 1980, we hired a guy that knew quite a bit about diesel engines. The guy's name was Joe Cotton. I learned a lot about diesel engines from Joe. I always tried to help Joe on the tractors. Okay. Joe worked for us right up until 1998. He taught me more about diesel engines than anybody. He actually, Joe, went to diesel school with John Linder. And that's kind of how we got hooked up with Linders. Okay. I was pretty upset the day he left. He had a family to raise, yep. you know, I commend him for that. Learned a lot too from Rob Russell. Really didn't know Rob until he started pulling pro stock. You know, I talked to him a few times in right. the late 2000s when he was fooling with super farms. Yep. Always watched him when he was pulling diesel super. Right now I talk to him about every day. Don't know what I'd do without him. River Rat's inception was probably in 1980. I often want to kind of go back to the old Imron green that it was, but boy, that was a pain. It was a, a du DuPont product, okay. Imron, and uh, Metal Flake. It had cyanide in it. <laughs> that, that's no joke. When wow. I can remember being a kid and they'd tell me to get out of the shop when they spraying it. Dad got real sick from it. The guy that was painting, he got sick from it too. It, it was, Quite the ordeal. We ran that Imran green paint 
right up until the very late, like 99, we finally quit. I painted it John Deere green. Okay. Because it, it had finally gotten so beat up, we yeah. just couldn't take it no more. I, I really don't know where it came from exactly, but he worked on it a lot when I wasn't around. Sure. 1980 was the start of River at. We were taking a friend, Steve Hoppy was his name. He wanted us to go with him to look at a tractor at Joel Arm Armistead's and Raymond Armistead's place. We went with Steve and they had a, a twin turbo diesel super there. The tractor had originally been bought from John Deere for pulling only. It never had a rock shaft on it. Anyway, it was purchased by Don Elder. They had bought it from Don Elder. I, I, I still laugh today. Dad made them an offer on it. And they said, well, Jay Fuquay's got the wheels and tires right now. Cause Jay Fuquay lived right there close. Yeah. Anyway, we didn't want the wheels and tires because they were 30.5s. Jay finally agreed to buy the tires and wheels and they told us to come get it. Pro Stock, I think, started in 1979. Of course, it was supposed to be a starter class to yeah. get into Super Stock. Yep. We all know that classes just get out of hand. I, I can remember the days of chasing the Hypermax tractors. I remember a night watching Bill Voorhees and Dad pull off three times. Brett Berg built that Magnum tractor for Bill. Okay. Uh, I can remember the first pull Bill came to with that tractor. Really? Hopstot, Indiana. That that was the first place I ever saw the, the V-cut tires. Okay. You know, he had them on there. I remember really not liking that tractor. <laughs> <laughs> that was back when he had the 966 sheet metal okay. in the Hoosier State days in the 80s. Bill wanted to split it, but Dad didn't want to. <laughs> One of the most frustrating tractors for me in Hoosier State was Steve Rodebush, MF Express. Oh yeah, he was good back in, you know, back about 85 and 86, that, it was tough. 2000 was a, a fantastic year for us. Competing against Steve Boyd will make you a better puller. Steve Boyd made us better pullers. We had to think about things we'd never thought about before. Probably if some people knew what I get by with, they'd be amazed. The biggest thing is I've seen a lot of people come and go in pro stock. That drive I told you about to, to look at another tractor and then we ended up buying Tinker Toy. We rolled, rode to that Joel and Raymond Armstead's house in the Foles family station wagon. I rode in the back with David Foles who is <laughs> right out here cooking. I can remember we, he, he's a couple years older than I am. We were sneaking beer out of the cooler. I was probably maybe 11 or 12. <laughs> I, I've, I've spent my life around the Foles family and they're still here. You can hear David laughing. 2009, we were having a hard time getting farm help. I mean, it, it was down to one guy was retiring from us. It was pretty much gonna be me and dad. And, and then my nephew came to work with us. Dad said, we still need more help. About that time, this uh, fertilizer company, Wagner Seed and Fertilizer, was closing the doors. Well, Daryl worked there. We'd known Daryl all our lives. We, we went, Dad and I drove down to Wagner's to see Daryl, and that's kind of how Daryl come to work for us. I, I wouldn't trade Daryl for the world. He takes care of things around home. We, I don't know, I just enjoy watching him go down the track. He, he does a good job. He, he deserves that for all the work he does. Patrick Gentry started going with us. Yep. Patrick helps me so much. He keeps me straight in the shop, what I'm doing, picks up tools after me. <laughs> I'm a pretty messy guy. <laughs> he always makes sure that we got everything we need when we leave for a pull. Joey Harris. Joey's a, a technician for John Deere. Matter of fact, he always pulls his big service truck up by the shop door right by the highway. And people want to know if I'm paying John Deere to come work on our pulling tractors for us. That's we got funny. a we got a laugh out of that one the other day. Joey, we don't call him the badger for nothing. He he will dive in and, and just go to work. What whatever we need to do. More than anything, I I appreciate my crew that 
helps me a lot. Joey, Patrick. And then we got Robert Dimmitt, AKA Ralphie. He, he really has stepped up. A lot of times we'll call him Nanny Rob. He'll, he'll take care of my boys when they come along with us. Works out really well. You gotta have people.